Hey everybody, this is Chris back with the Beamer Barn and today I'm showing you how to enable full OBD access on all the modules on your pre-facelift BMW with this one simple trick. So here is my 2000 E46 328i BMW. And although this car has an OBD2 port inside of the driver's footwell, it also has a 32 pin adapter here in the engine bay. So right next to our ABS unit, you have the 32 pin adapter. It has a cap on here and it has all these pins. Now, if you wanted to scan anything besides the DME, you would need to connect an adapter to this OBD port right here and that would allow you to scan it. The adapter looks like this. So it converts the 32 pin over to a traditional OBD port on one end and then that would connect to your scanner. So here what I'm using is an iCarsoft multi-brand scanner. It works really good for BMWs as well as some other models, but I don't wanna have to use this adapter all the time. So today I'm gonna show you how to hack your OBD circle pin cap in order to get full OBD access through your OBD port inside the car. I know I've said the word OBD like a million times now, but bear with me. This is a really cool mod to do if you have a pre-facelift BMW and it's gonna apply to anything before 2001 that uses this 32 pin adapter. So since I already have an extra cap here, let's go ahead and modify this one and I'm gonna show you how that's done really easily. All you're gonna need is a little bit of wire and a soldering iron, ideally. And once we've bypassed this cap completely and we don't have to use this connector, we'll have full module access from inside the car. And that way, if you need to do any coding or reprogramming, you can do it from inside the car. This is gonna work with all your BMW dealer tools, as well as any aftermarket scanners like this one that I have here. So here we have everything that we need to do our modification, our soldering iron, a little bit of solder. Now here is the cap that we're gonna be modifying. I'd recommend taking it out of the car, and that's as simple as twisting it counterclockwise to loosen it, and then the same thing a few times over to get this, uh, this ring here off. On some cars, obviously, you might find that this is already snapped off, but uh, if you can keep it in one piece and go ahead and try. Uh, and here is the wire that we're gonna use. Any sort of basic wire, um, thick gauge or thin gauge should work. And we're just gonna cut off about an inch of wire. That's all you're gonna need for this mod. So we're gonna get it started here by cutting off, like I said, about an inch of wire. Should be fine right there. Put that away and then we're going to go ahead and trim off just about half a centimeter's worth of uh of wire on either end and these are going to touch the posts inside of our cap so that's that like i said about an inch and then you can strip off a little bit over or a little bit under let's say a centimeter on either end and that is what you're going to use to sort of wrap around or touch the contacts inside of your uh, your cap here. Now here inside the 32 pin connector, we're going to have to join 17 and 20. And that's going to be these two here. So they're the two pins that are just about the furthest apart. They're kind of like the most awkward ones. Um, and we're going to do a bridge up around the uh, the board here. That's gonna allow us to connect this back onto the connector inside the engine bay and have a permanent connection between these two points. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also wrap a little bit of wire around here if you needed something more temporary, uh, but using solder is gonna make sure that the connection doesn't you know, corrode and get weaker over time or, or move or shift or anything like that. So let's go ahead and pre-solder the ends here so that they have a little bit of flux and solder on them. Now we can take our wire and we're gonna go ahead and just place it on top of the pins so that they're touching. So just like that, we've laid the wire in there and it's just balancing. We're gonna go ahead and heat up the pins, add a little bit of fresh solder and it should make a really good 
welded connection basically uh, between those two. And there's our final product. So the pins are nice and clean soldered on. The wire is flush against the uh, green circuit board and uh, we didn't burn anything. So be careful when you're soldering because you don't want the tip of the solder to you know, hit anything plastic and melt it off. So now let's go inside the car and I'm gonna show you first how this car scans without our modified OBD adapter. And then we're gonna connect this inside the engine bay and I'm gonna show you guys how we can scan all the modules. So I'm on my scanner here and let's go ahead and try our diagnostics. Now this is what would allow us to usually access all the modules on the car, perform uh, you know resets of the oil maintenance intervals and stuff like that. Now I should be able to click this here button and be able to access everything, but it says uh, it's got a problem. It's not connected correctly. And that's because we don't have the bypass connector in. And if we wanted to access all the modules, we would need to use the adapter. Now this scanner also has a generic OBD engine checker. So let's run that really quick and we should be able to see the generic DME codes. Um, and this is because of the uh, universal compliancy that started in 1995 and all that um, so should be able to see the engine light and we do have an engine light because our math sensor is bad so bad math sensor that's the only one there but that's how you can see that you know with the car on we can read engine codes uh, but we can't read any of the other codes for like the radio air conditioning uh, anything all right, now there's no movie magic here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our factory 32 pin connector. And we're gonna softly grab this uh, shielding here. So that is successfully removed. We're gonna go ahead and install our modified 32 pin connector here. And this twists right on just like the factory one. Let's go ahead and get inside the car and test our functionality. All right, so our key is on. We're gonna go ahead and try our diagnostics menu. And it looks like it works. So on the iCarSoft here, you have the option to manually enter each of the modules. So it gives you the full list of 45 possible modules. Uh, but on, a, on this car here, I think it's something like, there's only like 17 modules or, or something like that. Um, so let's go ahead. We can check out our e our DME. Um, so that's easy, you know. But the cool stuff is now we can see like why we have an ABS light on, for example. So we can scan that, read the fault codes, and we see that this car has a bad pre-charge pump. And so that looks to be what the issue is. Possibly the sensors but we can go ahead and clear that fault if we wanted to. We can go into the things like the instrument cluster, read the fault codes for the instrument cluster. So that's really cool. Uh, you get full OBD access with this mod. And if you had a tool on your laptop like INPA or ISTA, uh, any of those BMW dealer tools would also work to give you full access to all the modules uh, from inside the car here. So Goose is waiting for us to get out of here. Uh, you can tell he wants us to be over with this uh, video, but I hope you learned something because uh, this is a really cool mod for those of you guys that are DIYers like me. You're doing your own um, you know, diagnostics at home. You're replacing modules. You might need to code them. So this is gonna work to do all that work from inside the car and you won't have to buy a separate adapter anymore. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe you learned something. Let me know down in the comments below if you've done this mod before or if you're going to do it now uh, we got a lot more BMW videos like this one coming out a lot more DIYs and tutorials little mods like this so if you want to see more videos like this one subscribe to the channel but for now we will see you next time